Welcome to another Friday Reads where I talk about what I've read, what I'm reading, what I'm getting to next, and also this is going to be like my holiday TBR because I am going home for the holiday next week. It's going to be wonderful. Also means there will not be a Friday Reads next week, but there will still be a Friday video. I bulk filmed some things yesterday, so you'll still get content from me, but I'm, I'm not going to try and film while I'm home while we're doing all our holiday things, but I'll probably, maybe, if I get my life together, do a vlog like I did last year because I love vlogging all the things we do. We we get a Christmas tree, we decorate cookies, we hang out. I think it could be fun. So if I am able, I will put like a little like holiday reading vlog together to post once I'm back, but Friday won't have that. But into the books, I finished, I think two things? I feel like it's just two things, which is just, I'm very happy with what I just finished like 10 minutes ago. And that is this book. Crown of Swords. And I have a weird, unpopular opinion that this might be my favorite Wheel of Time book. <laughs> people, some people say this is the first book in the slog. Um, I do know many people who don't think this is where the slog starts, but some of my favorite character moments so far have been in this book. I actually really liked the ending. <laughs> um, the title makes sense. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know who I am. I don't know why I am the way I am. But I actually really liked what this book accomplished and what it's set up. And I know I'm probably going to be disappointed in the following books and how it's maybe going to handle some of the threads. But there are certain threats that are introduced that I really like. We kind of handle a threat that I haven't liked as much. Things have moved forward. I don't know. I, I had a good time. So I finished that because... Uh, <laughs> if you didn't know there's a wheel of time show happening so everyone and their mother is now taking out these books from the library three months ago no one was taking this book out now there's like a hold for like three months and if i hadn't finished my audiobook before it went out I, I would have had to read this and we all know i don't read wheel of time with my eyes anymore that's not what i do so still glazed over lots of things that i didn't care about i still don't try to keep track of all of the machinations with some of these characters but I had a good time. Like, just, it's a, my favorite Wheel of Time book, but it's still only like a low four star read. <laughs> so take that as you will. A book I read that's like a four and a half star read, The Galaxy Game by Karen Lord. I mean, I was almost finished with it when I talked to you guys about it last week. Ah, uh, I really, I really liked it. And then I was like looking up reviews to like still think about it more and like, figure out what other people took from it because this is a story that's just a good story but it's also like a really good metaphor and analogy and it's just like such a vast world that you only get in this many pages and I just wanted to keep being in the world um the only thing that's like kind of a negative for me is I wish we had stayed with like fewer characters this is definitely the most POV book that I've read by Karen Lord and I just kind of wanted to focus in more kind of like what we had done in the best of all possible worlds but I still really liked it not as much as the best of all possible worlds but I really liked it and I'm so sad because I don't think this um did very well when it came out in like oh I was the mid 2010s I don't remember exactly the year I guess I could look but I don't think it did very well and because of that I there's not like another book in this world and it's definitely 2014 by the way set up so that there could be and I really want it even if it's just a novella or a short story there is there's a question in this book that is not answered and could be answered in its own book and I would totally read that in a second but um I don't know if that's where her creative juices have been going I know her newest release in January is going to be a sci-fi but it's not this world but I still really liked it so that was great and now what am I reading I am about halfway through the Hour of the Star by Clarice Lispector and um, it's really good but it's also like I was telling my friend who actually really loves um, the syntax of writing and the words behind writing and I'm like this book is so quality so intentional such good art and it's wasted on me like I'm enjoying it but I am you know some people love the sound of sentences right and the structure of them and like I like the premise of this and I like the exercise of it but these other parts of it that make it great art are just completely over my head 
But the premise of this is that our narrator is an author, it's written in first person, and this author is struggling but wanting to write this story about this poor woman who's a typist in this town village. And we learn about this character that this author needs to write about and how she appreciates life even though she is poor. And there's also a lot of commentary on what does it mean for this narrator, this author, writing about this character but not helping this character even though this character is i mean is real but like not real and i don't know i'm very excited to finish it to keep talking about it with leslie because we've been having a nice voxer chat because they've she's already finished it but as i get a couple pages in i like voxer her and then we talk a little and then there is a codex cantina video that i am very pumped to listen to and get more thoughts of this is definitely a piece best dissected and even though it's very short it, it takes a lot of my brain because it is very much like stream of conscious almost for this author's narrative perspective. Lots of like jumping around, which I don't dislike. I actually really like the narrative voice, but it also like is not about the plot like whatsoever. So I'm in the middle of that. I am also a good chunk of the way through Bitter Twins. I would have been further, but I had to finish A Crown of Swords. So that took a lot of my physical reading time. So, because I was like crocheting and listening to that, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this book is not over yet. But I did start Bitter Twins, and <laughs> I I am enjoying it. I think I need to get a little further in, but we are introduced to some cool magical creatures, and that's all I'll say. But it's 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 great. Okay, it's fantastic. We have kind of sort of some of my favorite tropes in terms of like teamwork and the the pits and falls you fall into when you're trying to form a new team. I love that and there I think I know where we're going because we we have this implication that if we go to this place we might get answers and the antagonistic force like in one hand you're just like yes evil no because of the actual actions but then we have a perspective that lets us kind of engage with it and then you're just like you're not necessarily on their side but you kind of or like, are they actually doing something that is morally wrong? Like, it feels wrong. Like, it feels like a bad thing they're doing. But the motives behind them. And it's not as simple as, like, morally gray. It's more just, like, how, how these are different species almost. So I'm, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying this book. I'm excited to get back into it. Hopefully, once I'm on vacation, this is one of those reads that I'm going to stick my nose into more. That's kind of the plan. And then I have read a few stories in the Mythic Dream because I was in a situation where I was able to read a few stories. So let me remind myself which ones I've read because some of them were really interesting. So <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So I've read four stories. Um, one of them is by Arcady Martine. And let me tell you, I was unprepared. <laughs> it was very crass, very crude. Um, the retelling is actually from, I think, Mesopotamia. It's very old. It's a very old myth that she based it off of. It's Ina takes command of heaven and, um, Inanna, maybe, actually. Yeah, Inanna. There's, there's more ends there. So I ended up liking it, but the language was just, I was unex, I was not expecting it, okay? I was just not expecting the language she used, but I liked actually the format of it and how it was kind of like this fragmented poem, but also how it's like you tell stories at the bar and how things can twist it over ages and how you take this very ancient myth and put it in a space opera setting. It was great. Um, Wild to Covet by Sarah Gailey. This was about Achilles' mom, and it's kind of set in sort of like, I don't know if it's Great Depression town, but kind of just like a poor town very rural and I think gosh I think it does actually have a distinct time and place but I'm forgetting it. I think it's America and it's near one of our wars because Achilles goes off to to war but not like the Trojan War and things like that but it's really about how her identity became that identity of Achilles mom which yeah that's really all you know about her in the Greek myths and it kind of recenters the story around her, her wildness, her agency, her trying to take control of her destiny. It was really interesting. Um, the one I really loved was Cuidado, que viene el coco, which <laughs> means careful, here comes Coco. And it's by Carlos Hernandez, which I love his short story collection. We all know this. Um, and it's actually the only stuff I've read by him, even though he has middle grade. And this short story is up there with some of my favorite by him. It's actually maybe one of the longest in this collection. And it's so good. I loved it. It's actually broken up into little tiny stories as you follow this father with mental health issues 
kind of figure out why what has happened to his daughter has happened, but also talking to this AI ship who's also his therapist. And it's a fascinating discussion about one's own mental health and parenthood and what you owe your children and how to seek forgiveness. Oh, it was really good. Really like that. And then He Fell Howling by Stephen Graham Jones, my first Stephen Graham Jones. Um... Some of the grossest images I've ever read, but I did like the story concept, which was Zeus turned the guy who tried to serve um, his son to Zeus into a wolf, and then it became a werewolf origin story. So that was pretty cool. Very gross. Like, very gross. Some of those scenes will stick with me. And, like, gross in, like, a good way. Like, you, you did it. You were trying to make it gross. I applaud you. So want to finish more stories in this, so I'm going to take this on my trip, although I have a, a Kindle version as well, so I might not pack the physical book because you know space gonna gonna work on this it's gonna be great i'm really having fun finish the, i think i'm gonna finish this before i head out like i film these on wednesdays i'm heading out this weekend so i think i'll have this done by actually friday and then the main book that i'm bringing with me that i hope i have all of the time to snuggle up in my living room by my mom's bookshelf and peacefully read and vlog about especially since it did not get nominated for the Goodreads Choice Award, and I might talk about this in many a video upcoming, <laughs> but The Mask of Mirrors. I, I'm actually not that surprised it didn't make it on the Goodreads Choice Awards. Uh, no one's been talking about this except me, and I am a small channel. So, <laughs> like, I think Elliot Brooks, sort of, but she didn't, like, love it as much as I do, which, fair. But, yeah. I love this book. It's great. I've never actually read from this copy. It is the floppiest thing. But I want to read it next week when I have no responsibilities. I'm just going to have fun with my family, get ready for the holidays, read this book. I'm taking the week off from my thesis because then December's game time. <laughs> it's completely game time. So I'm excited to read this. Uh, if you haven't heard me talk about this book, Venetian fantasy with like tarot reading magic, dream magic, like star chart magic. A political intrigue, ballroom politics, a masked avenger. It's great. It's great. My favorite morally gray character is in this book. That That's what I'll say there. And I don't know if I'll bring either of these books, but I went to the library this week and kind of like with the Echo Wife, a book just like jumped into my hands. And then I went to the hold shelf um, and I found out there was a book waiting for me at the hold shelf. So I was like, well, I guess I should just take it. What if I want to read it? And I don't know if I'm going to read either of these, but I kind of like holding them and it gives me the serotonin of buying books without like um, <laughs> buying books and I can always take them back. But I've got Once There Were Wolves, which is by the author of Migrations, which I really liked. And it's actually nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards. Um, it has an audiobook. It's really short. It's supposed to be suspenseful. Like I think it's only like 250 pages. So super short. I think the audiobook was like eight hours, not even. So... If I want something short, that would be nice. And then I've got the last Mary Brennan book for the Natural History of Dragons. So this is kind of like a companion novel. I thought I would try to physically read this one, especially since it's kind of mixed media. I think that'll work better. Like there's footnotes, I think. I just saw it. Yeah, there's like kind of footnotes and stuff. So I think this will work better physically reading. And I mean, I physically have read Mary Brennan. I don't need it to be Kate Redding. And it's not even Kate Redding for this audiobook anyways. If it was Kate Redding, I would listen to it because Lady Trent. And I know it's not Lady Trent. I know it's her granddaughter, which is fine. Which like begs another question of like, if you've read the Lady Trent series, you know what her son's like. And I'm like, when did this happen? <laughs> so I'm also excited to connect those dots and figure that out maybe. So yeah, and I already bought my tickets for Encanto, and I'm so excited. Oh, I cannot wait. So many great things are happening, and I'm just going to ride that high before I have to, like, dive into my laptop and write more in December, because that, that's my December. But let me know what you're doing this weekend, what you're reading, what you're watching. Have you, you know, are you excited for Wheel of Time? That drops today. So, I mean, before you even see this video, it's available. Have you watched it? Don't tell me spoilers, but you can tell me what you think. I'm, I am curious. And I think I'm probably going to like it because I am easy to please with visual media. I'm basically just like, ooh, shiny. I I'm so easy. <laughs> But if you want to leave an emoji, leave a mask for the Mask of Mirrors, because honestly, I might just talk about it a lot in upcoming videos because it was done dirty.
It's like literally one of my like top fantasy books of the year. Poor baby. Granted, <laughs> I'm not the only one who didn't get their favorites nominated, so it is what it is. But like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.